it's probably red. Uh, we are going to jump right into a draft. I am super stoked. All right. So, uh, let me look. Let me look. Let me see how crazy it looks. I know. I'm being vain. Oh, it's kind of kind of fluffy. Kind of fluffy. It's okay. I'm okay with that. It looks okay on this small camera, but we're not zooming in. We're not zooming in. Okay, okay. Uh, let's do this thing. That's not the important part. So we're just gonna take a quick look. Um, we're gonna we're gonna save our throws keepsake for last. Okay. So we've got the volume pretty low for when we're getting the draft together. Okay. So Red Mask Warrior, decent playable card. Uh, honestly, it's got aggressive stats, but it could be used pretty effectively defensively. The only thing is, is the occasional ping will just wipe it off the face of the board. Um, yeah. And then Brightling, still not super fond of this card. Not sold on it. I would play it. I would run it. Uh, but it would be super filler, like low D plus for me. Like I'm going to start trying to use the letter grades that I'm thinking of, you know, now. Like kind of, you know, kind of formulated where some of these sit in my mind, I would say. At least for like the moment. Torn of Filth, I don't like that for card. I'm not going to letter grade every card I'll go across either. Because that would take forever. Uh, Mandrake Shriveler, I think this is a pretty solid card. At least four. I'm between Red Mask, Warrior, and Mandrake Shriveler. Let's go on to the next layer of commons. Uh, Lurking Brute takes the cake. Out of all this stuff right here, all this little uh, night movement. Well, this would be a night movement, but you know, night movement plus one. Yeah, Lurking Brute is my ace in the hole so far. Sand Tornado, I feel like Sand Tornado should actually be higher on my list. It's in time. Like, that it is, not that Lurking Brew. I think Lurking Brew is better. Like, it's kind of like a sleeper card, though. Like, people think it's good. I think it's so good. I think it's got so much potential. Like, like you run stuff in Shadow, like, to make it get through. Because it's that good. Sand Tornado, I think, is pretty decent. Uh, it fights the fact that there's so many two drops in this format. Like, if you can get this, like, it's a, such a good C. Like, it's a C, but it's such a good C. Uh, the Flying... It's not as important as it just being 2-3 on stats. Uh, it just comes in and kills a unit. Well, if it comes in, kills a unit, and then you have for the rest of the game, it doesn't say it can't attack. Like, it, it's going to keep attacking. It's really, really nice to stat a unit there. Uh, I feel like I've underestimated it a little bit, then I kind of overestimate it, and then I underestimate it again. Now I think I'm like kind of more comfortable with where I'm at with it. Uh, Seed of Creation, what does this one even do? Uh, I don't remember this being very good. Yes. It's Praxis. You get a random power card and a non-power card. Now, that's pretty interesting. So you get a random, random power card and non-power card from your deck. Uh, that's such an odd card, and it might be good. It might be better than I was thinking. And then the two damage is it's okay. It's kind of weird, but it's very fire. So, Worldly Cleric's okay. Doesn't beat out a Lurking Brute for me. I would rather have a 2-2 that gets bigger then pay three for it and then gain some life. Now, I could be decent. Like, it's a good filler card, but just not. Now, this card, moving on. Mobilization over the uncommons. Mobilization, that's a good card. It's only like a 2-4, two, two bodies, but then it comes back, making it a 4-8 for three, even though it's on four bodies. It's really good. It's one of the best promo cards. Speaking of good promo cards, Ancient Serpent's also good. It's a 3-4 flyer that gets you any spell from your void. And then gives it a void bound. That's a trick shot ruffian got a little bit worse. And a, a little bit is actually a lot. Got a lot worse. Got a lot, a lot worse. Lifelink kind of made it pretty powerful. Not gonna lie. Uh, now let's check out Bartholo's keepsake. But I'm not saying it's bad. It, it, it's just more of an ag aggressive unit than a sustaining aggressive unit. I, can, I don't know where it sits now. I'm kind of having trouble evaluating it. I don't think it's too much further down the line, though. I think it's still something you want to run if you're in Justice. Um, it might just still be a shoe in and draft. Like, I mean, the life steal does save you, like, a couple turns, which could make a big difference. Uh, gives you time to kind of build up if you're playing Combre. Um, gives you time to get the, the burn finish if you're in Rakana, that sort of thing. If you're an Arjun port, it lets you get to some of your powerful, powerful plays that can kind of swing the game, like a removal spell or a weapon to, you know, do something with, you know. Um, so far, I like Lurking Brute. Almost, like, I want to I uh, go Ancient Serpent just because I don't know if I'm a Primal yet. 
So it's like Lurking Brute or Trickshot Ruffian, probably. Um, I'm still kind of leaning Lurking Brute, but I don't know. Mobilization actually would be the card I would go into probably for, probably. Because uh, it would be good in uh, Thelenor Skycrack, probably, I would say. Draw a unit, weapon, or power of your choice from the top four cards of your deck and bottom the rest. If you can make it so Barthos keeps the only non-unit weapon or power, like, you know, but none of those three in, the, in your whole deck, like, no other spells, uh, then it can be pretty good. Like, it's... Okay, and then if you have a lot of three or less costs, which isn't necessary, we want, we own a good portion of them. Playing it, so it's just like... Huh. What does this card do, though? Gives you a random card off the top four? Of your choice. Not random. You can choose one of the top four cards you your deck to play, depending on what you need. Um, you're getting no cost advantage. I don't know. I don't think it's that good. I think it's... I think it, it's potentially worth playing with, but I don't think it's worth building around, you know? I think I'd rather have Lurking Brute. This is kind of a hard pack for me. Uh, cards that I liked. Sand Tornado, Red Mask Warrior. Cards that I really like. Trick Shot Ruffian, Lurking Brute. Okay, so... I'm gonna go Lurking Brute. Even though I think Justice is probably the more logic. Ooh, okay. Hasty Builder. Oh yeah, I remember this card. Ultimate abilities are fast. So there is a slight like with uh, Lord Ra Ragnarok, Lord Rag Ragnar, Lord Ragnar. Uh, he's a six-five quick draw rare card. He also has something that affects ultimate abilities. And in this one, I don't really like the pay two to shuffle a board of your choice into the deck. It's great to have that in like a, a constructed format because it fights void recursion, that sort of thing. Ironically, it's in Zenin, so um, yeah. And it's a 2 cost 2 3, which is great. That's good stats. But for that, that influence cost? No, don't like that. Uh, I like Omen Scar Worm, okay, that's fine. Going backwards this time. Uh, Steam Blast, deal damage to an enemy unit equal to your number of units. Okay, so I think that's like, if you're doing pretty good, like if you're, if you're ahead, you don't like 3 damage. If you're really ahead, you're doing much damage. If you're in board stall, it's pretty good too. Like if you're, in, if you're stat. Board stall could be four, it could be, could be five. Uh, it could be like three still. And then it kind of becomes a, I think it's like a piercing shot. That's what it is. Usually it's piercing shot, but it ha has a lower floor and a higher ceiling. Yep. I don't know. And it's, I mean, you're putting us into different colors. Uh, Badge of Honor would have been really nice with that Trick Shot Ruffian. Would have been a great second pick. Another Lurking Brute isn't bad. Uh, False Demise. Now, I probably should know this. And I'm pretty sure I know the answer. Um, yeah, I think the clone. No, what am I talking about? Draw in Reward. Which is the, oh, I'm thinking of a completely different card. I'm thinking like Venge Vengeful Flight, not False Demise. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was thinking this was Vengeful Flight. This is False Demise. Whew, those cards are easy to get confused in my opinion. So draw you to free void if you have double primal it gets plus one health and flying. Has revenge. Uh, it's okay. The recursion makes it kind of almost worth. I don't think this is very good. Uh, Armed and dangerous. I wouldn't pick this early unless I'm like I, I probably wouldn't pick it too late. Like like I probably wouldn't pick it very often. I mean it's a hugely powerful card, but it, that influence cost and that, that I mean it's the top end on a deck that. Would be very aggressive. Uh, Battery Mage is kind of calling to me here. Zenon's kind of a weird combination, though. Um, but I mean, it's probably pretty good. I mean, time's good. We're not too far in shadow. I like Battery Mage a lot. Uh, another Lurking Brute, though. I, 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 I think Lurking Brute might be the answer. Uh, Badge of Honor is very good, but uh, I'm like Lurking Brute or Badge of Honor here. Blood's Pursuit's pretty good. Storm Pillar is pretty bad, in my opinion. So, it's like the far right. Any of those three. Badge of Honor. Uh, let me see if I can point to it. Badge, Badge of Honor. Battery Mage. Or Lurking Brute. Yeah, I think I pointed to it. Um, yes. So, I think I'm going to go Lurking Brute here. 
maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this is like an example of, <laughs> we're, we're gonna take it. Okay, no third looking brew. Okay, we have Vorpal Cutter though. Okay, okay. Let's see, we're, we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna do this order now. I like I like that Midnight Hunt though. Okay, Vorpal Cutter it is entirely based on like how powerful your units are. They're like really, like a, it's good in Stone's Yard because they're like a really aggressively stated units. And it has decay, which is nice. Even a 1-3 decay. For two, a 1-3 decay would be pretty good. For four, and giving it flying, it's pretty bad. So three cost one three decay that can be very aggressively strong. It's pretty darn good. Caravan Garden, I don't think so. It's good, but I want to already be in justice probably. I'm not saying I want to pick it, but we're gonna look. Um, Midnight Hunt. The this could be like phase damage equal to your shadow influence. Uh, also can kill some pretty big units and save your units. Like a better one of the better combat tricks. Being three, eh, it's kind kind of not as good as it could be. You could hold up three sometimes, and then uh, being a fast spell and having revenge. I mean, that's what makes it a trick. Having revenge, that's kind of okay. It's pretty good. Disappears pretty good, but I want to already be in time. Hardy Warrior with a premium. Man, that card looks awesome. I really love that art. That is so shiny. And the snow is falling. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, but I'm not super fond of taking it this early, like I was saying. Uh, I think this card's better than I originally thought it was, but I still am not too high on it. I could take a, a Mandrake Shambler, um, but I'd rather take Midnight Hunt at this point. Now, Cloud Stick Mountain might be the reason that pulls us into Primal here, because Primal's probably going to be sort of open, and it just like makes something. It's like a, it's like the Elder's Feather, but it also, instead of giving plus one attack, it gives plus two health. And if the unit dies, you get the unit back. This is so much better than Elder's Feather. Of course, they could kill the original unit, and then it's basically like they're killing the unit that's equipped with Elder's Feather in, in an Elder's Feather scenario. Uh, and you're left with a 0-2 flying blocker that can pay 6 to deal 2 damage to any enemy. This card's kind of ridiculous, right? Then Reality Snap. Uh, I feel like Reality Snap's also pretty good. It's a nice little tempo removal for the revenge. Uh, it's, it's, this pack's pretty pretty uh, pretty uh loaded up here. I like Midnight Hunt, Cloud Sig Mountain, Reality Center. Those are the three cards. Eh, Vorpal Hunter. Or Vorpal Hunter. Vorpal Cutter. Hmm. Try to figure out if I would take Vorpal Cutter over Midnight Hunt. This is just feels like a removal. This, I think that's too heavy. That's too, too top end in a different color, yeah. I think I should just not go into Primal this early, even though that is a good reason to go into Primal. Such a solid card. Uh, so Midnight Hunter, Vorpal Cutter. Maybe I'm being too stubborn. Maybe I should go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go a little bit into Felm. We're just going to try it out for a second. Uh, the enemy player must choose and sacrifice two units. If this card if this card was better, uh, I feel like it would just make Felm better. Um, but two units isn't too bad. It could just be like two rustlings, though. That's the problem. Okay. Um... I like Beseech a Throne. Uh, we could just jump into Dark Fire here, and I think that's what we're going to do. Because um, really nothing else is speaking to me except for Beseech a Throne. Now, Beseech a Throne is pretty good. Pretty solid, but I don't think there's any reason not to just go Dark Fire. I'm going to go Dark Fire, see where that takes us. Wow, 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 wow. This is... Probably should have seen the signs. Uh, at this point... We could take a chain with bludgeon or I think be pretty safe. Let's spell my nurse signs here. I think like missing a spell by nurse sign I wouldn't regret as much as uh, missing out on the fact that this is totally potentially open justice. Some of just did not I mean maybe it was just a justice filled pack because it is like half the pack or uh, not even half. Anyways, we're taking the chain with bludgeon. Okay, now this is no justice in tons of time. So that's not a good sign. That is a card I would take. That's a solid card. But I would take Desperate Courier. I would take Apprentice Mage very highly. And then there's Blur Haze Worm. I think out of all this, Blur Haze Worm is probably the best card. Uh, followed by probably, honestly, Silverblade Reaper and then Apprentice Mage. Uh, for Get's okay to have one of, but I think I'm going to take the Silverblade Reaper. I might be crazy in thinking it's better than Apprentice Mage. But. 
if the next pack is a bunch of time or a mix of time and justice, then I'm going to feel pretty silly. Crazy that I'm missing that on that. We're going to try this out. So a little bit of time here, a lot of primal, which isn't really doesn't really mean anything. A valiant e leap. Give one of your units flying and overwhelm. It also gets plus two plus two. Huh. I think I'll take the valiant leap almost. Um, seeing all of that, oh, we got a cloud thing up though. Seeing all of that uh, time and justice, it's kind of got me sketched out a little bit. Uh, the only other card here that I wouldn't really want one of these, I would want those bubble under sign though. We saw one back there. I think I want to take the, I don't know though. Cause I don't think we're going Hoover here. It's it's either Sand Tornado, because I'm not going to take this. Probably not. Yeah, no. I'll, I'm either taking Sand Tornado or Valiant Leap. I think I'm honestly about to speculate on a Valiant Leap. We're going to do it. We probably aren't going to. Uh, price sounds okay. Wish we had taken that buffing. Wow, fell and vow. Look at all you honestly take the fell and vow. Uh, I like the grizzled outcast. Hmm. None of this is particularly a sign. I mean, the fell and vow might just be good to have to fix um, for some like crazy costing stuff. I don't think I should take it though. Um, I think we could probably get away with the Grizzled Quick Shot. I think maybe a Prowling Sow is safer. It doesn't really do too much for us, though. This is at least a 3 1. Man, it's so much worse than uh, Lord Ragnar. So, this is technically a removal. It's got Decay. It's like the worst um, Corrosive Rounds ever. Yeah, no, it's a bad card. I'm going to take Grizzled Outcast. Got Obsidian Tower and Arachnid. I think I honestly want to take the Spellbound on our sign. It's a hard choice, though. Because we're not like, we're not, okay, maybe with Primal, like in our pack four, we'll have a bunch of fodder generation. And maybe two, three will have some fodder generation, but I'm not super sure. The two, five isn't bad. The thing is, is you get to plunder. It's a hard choice. Hmm. Is it though? Is it? Is it a hard? I'm making it too difficult. Let's take the towering right Uh I think I could take a Mandrake Chambler here. We'll take it. We'll take hmm, Price now. Now we'll take a Reflection and toss it away. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We are mostly Shadow. With a, with, with a good way, uh, okay, just a quick look at the justice, mm, okay, throw that away for a second, then we'll keep those as a consideration, we could always go back to justice, we have it in the pool right there, uh, levitate's a completely runnable card, I'm sure feathers is okay, I think I probably, yeah, well, uh, the, you're not going to decimate it too often, and it's like flash freeze, but a little bit higher uh, influence cost, I believe. I think it's higher influence cost. Uh, is flash freeze, which is the one that sounds too, it, I mean, it really, if it's called flash freeze, it really should be a fast spell. So that makes it a lot, a lot worse. But then Storm of Feathers, you think a fast spell too. Uh, Levitate is pretty darn good. What do we got? Cut brush cartograph. Cartographer. Okay, so when you get a card, when you draw a card, Cutbrush Cartographer gets plus one attack. Okay, so over time that can be pretty, pretty strong and aggressive, you know, aggressively stabbed attacking unit. Um, Berserk and Flying this turn, it's going to leave your unit reckless if you use the Berserk, which you should, I would say. And it's basically a burn spell. feels like a burn spell because it's not fast. Uh, but could you pretty decent amount of damage. Um, Stalwart Silverwing is not that great here. Uh, do we don't have enough like sm like fodder for the Sanguine Sword to be good yet, and we're, we're not really in justice yet. Like, not really a consideration. 
We could take an improvised uh, club. It's something that we could run. It's a good top end, but we're not very rampy. So, uh, Flame Keeper. That's a pretty good card. It's exalted and overwhelm. And for what it, for what it's worth, uh, it does to one enemy. Yeah, you can make your dark fires of overwhelm. That's a good bit of little synergy. A little, a little bit of synergy there. Good bit of synergy. Anyways, good bit of synergy. Um, yeah, it's definitely better than Touch of the Wild. Uh, Seraph's Choice, double the attack and health of your units this turn, or draw unit of choice from your deck and double the attack and health permanently. Um, and Fantastic Revelation. I don't think that's a good card. I think it's a very not fantastic card. Um, okay, so I'm going to say Improvised Club, maybe Cutbrush Cartographer. But really, the best card I would say, I mean, the best card is probably Improvised Club. The card we're probably going to take is Flame Keeper here, even though there's a good bit of five drops we could be using. Um, I don't really like a lot of our choices here. You know, there's not too many four drops that we would be willing to use, so maybe Cutbrush Cartographer would be a better bet. But I think Flame Keeper is a lot better than Cutbrush Cartographer. Don't know if we're going to run it. It depends on if we get into fire, but we're going to try it out. We're going to take it. Now, uh, okay, so a 4-2 charge unit, it's not too bad, uh, and you get fodder, so that's not bad either, gives you something to sacrifice uh, if you need to. Also gives you blockers, which is pretty odd, it leaves back a blocker, but yeah, if your opponent's being pretty aggressive, it kind of helps you survive or out aggro them, essentially, like, because they can't aggro as hard. It's a very interesting card, I think it's not bad. Um, for 4, it's pretty expensive, uh, uh, power-wise. Um, Auric Weaponsmith. 4 cost 3, 3, when you play a weapon, it gets plus 1, plus 1. I don't think that's too good. Not for us, at least. Uh, Tend the Flock, I think, is worse than Cheerful Shepherd, really, because uh, you have no attack. But it is super cool to see Kriva next to Tend the Flock. I think that is a wonderful thing to see. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, Bane Wolf. That's just a huge blob of stats that if your opponent can't deal with it, it becomes even harder to deal with. Um, so other than that, I would say um, between... Uh, I would honestly just take Bane Wolf over Improvised Club. Uh, it's, it's For me here, it's Kriva or Bane Wolf. Tempting to take Kriva. Uh, it's very, very strong card. Like, I think it's stronger. Than, I feel like it's, it's kind of an underrated card. I would say I'm, a pretty bold statement there, but I think it's true. I think it's true. Kriva's underrated. Uh, I don't think uh, Bane Wolf is. I think it's very good. <laughs> I think it's good, and I think people think it's good. It's sort of like kind of just. Uh, I think it's getting to seven. Might want to be kind of an aggressive deck, but having top end's good. Uh, honestly, those are the only two cards I'm considering. And in this case, the cheaper cards, Kriva, but the easier to cast, like cost wise, like influence cost, is the Bane Wolf. So, uh, but at the same time, I think Kriva's better. Oh, I'm kind of stuck on this decision. The thing is, oh. This is the kicker. You have to cast this every single turn. And that's why we're taking Bane Wolf. I forgot that the thing. It's safe from slow speed removal, but at the same time, that's a huge sink. Now, Gun Down is already staring at us. It's a great card. Uh, I don't think Gordon Cutthroat very much. I don't think it's as good as Gun Down. Here's another Bane Wolf, though. Which is kind of. kind of. Oh, but okay. Gun Down's good. Thunder of Wings, a 4-1 charge flying dragon that doesn't return to your hand at a turn uh, for three, if you, if you exhaust the unit. I think that's better than Gun Down, right? It's hard not to take Gun Down. Reason we shouldn't take Gun Down is because we're running stuff like Dark Fire already. I think we should just take the Thunder Wings. It actually helps our Dark Fire a good bit. We're gonna take the Thunder Wings. I might be too crazy, but I don't know. It's it's hard decision. Hard decision. 
Uh, Fearsome Grief is not very good in draft, in my opinion. But man, this pack is looking like we made a mistake. Um, I would say the best card in this pack that I can see, uh, probably Predator's Instinct and uh, Carpal Marshall. If that's the case, honestly, we could take the Waystone because this is sort of a dead pack for us. Uh, we could try to jump into Justice. I think that would be probably a good call. We're going to take the Granite Waystone and see where it goes. Okay, now Flash Fire. It's a bit of a stretch here. Um, but we might. Let's see what Leader's Choice does. Two damage any player you in then Rally. Okay. Uh, not that good. It's a really, really expensive Rally. Or you get two one ones and gain two health. Uh, that's worse. It's a five cost two two on two bodies. It's like paying five times as much for a granite and drone, but you gain two health. Four cost four power to gain two life. Whoa, whoa. Looking at it that way, it's pretty bad. Um, so we haven't completely forsaken primal. Um, I think a flash fire is. Uh, not super good. I think if anything, we could probably take the Linra Evangel, and we will. Uh, flash fire again. That's a sign that someone's not super hard into fire, which we're not really either. Um, but other than that, I mean, Long Tail Cavalry is probably a pretty big sign that somebody's not in justice. I think the Carpal Porter is pretty good. Uh, I guess I could take. Cutbrush cut Cartographer isn't too terrible either. I'll take a speculative uh, flash fire. If we go deeper into fire on the next two packs. Well, I think Skeletal Dragon's not bad. Nickel Cutter is okay. I don't think it comes up too much. The fact that's a 3 1. Not in this format. Life Seals. Yeah, there's some life there. Uh, Sersha's Meddling's okay, too. The fact that it's a fast buff would be pretty nice, because they can swing in. I'm pretty sure the pig stays attacking if your opponent's, uh, uh, the opponent's unit is attacking. Um, so I might go ahead and... I think Skeletal Dragon's a better bet. I think it's better than it has been in, in a good bit. Um, Reconnaissance is a perfectly, perfectly playable card. Gives some unblockable... Uh, other than that, I don't see anything I'd want here. I guess I could take another Granite Waystone. Yeah, I don't see anything else we really want. Let's take the Granite Waystone. Um, here, Crown Watch Longsword is probably the, be the best card, but we'll take an Assault Shield. <sighs> We're going to have three Granite Waystones in this deck. And a Death from Buff. Get out of here. Let's take that real quick. We will definitely run all three of the waystones. It's pretty crazy. Um, okay, let's look at this deck. Wow, okay, wow. Tattoo Dragon is just great. Especially with three granite waystones. Oh my gosh. Yeah, do we have any others with the draws and stuff? Yeah, reconnaissance. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay, just double checking here. Uh, plunder, yep, there's one. Okay. Hey, that's a good bit of triggers for Tattoo Dragon. Uh, we don't need the Bane Wolf. Uh, there's a Kodosh Evangel here, but we don't really need it. I would say Tattoo Dragon is pretty much only challenged by Flame Keeper here for me, for what we're building. So let me go with Tattoo Dragon. That's whew, one of the easier picks. I don't want a second flash fire here. Vara's favorite is pretty nice because you get the little ping action, a little life gain action, and you get a sigil. Honestly, I think I could get rid of Valiant Leap here. Uh, so here, <clears throat> we got a good bit of fire stuff we're looking at here. Uh, Vara's favorite is alright, but I think Centaur Outriders Pretty solidly statted unit. I don't have like a bunch of like a load of the ground stuff. We just got a couple of our early game units. 
uh, I don't want to run four lane stranger or or forsworn stranger. This is kind of a rough pack, honestly. Uh, it's okay. Rally is just not quite there for me. It's not it's not making it. Okay, so like that might sound crazy. I mean, Colt Recruiter is great, but it's just not in our faction. We're a bit deep into what we have. Uh, maybe Assault Shield is better than Centaur Outrider. Uh, it's a hard choice. I almost think I should just take the Vars favor. I mean, having another four drop isn't bad. And it, while it's very aggressively statted, uh, it, it does hit a Dresden Thor Fire. Yeah, I think I'll take this into our rider. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, Savagery is playable. We could play Savagery. Burning Cord Drake. Now that's decent. 3 1 Flyer. Reckless. Okay, there's not too much flying in this format. Shavka Vandal is also extremely good, but I feel like it, like it's better in a very fire centric deck. And Burning Core Drake is a great card. Uh, Ghost Room is pretty decent. Other than that, I think Burning Core Drake is a very easy shoe in right here. Um, hmm, Furnace Elot's okay. Okay, there's not anything else in this entire pack except for if we're running some Primal or a little bit of Justice. So this comes in, gives a minus one, minus one to something. And you can give units random basketballs. Uh, not my cup of tea. So I'm like Inferno Zealot or Cersei's meddling. I think I'll take the Zealot here. I hope there's more fire in the next pack. Okay. <clears throat> I'd rather have the Waystone here. Probably. I the unit dies. I would say it's usually it's going to be the 3-3 three, three that gives you 3 health. Um, some culture is pretty bad. I mean, it's got it's got some decent top end. Like it's got some potential. You don't want all your units to be dying all the time, though. So I think I'll use. Mm, I think I can go with a uh, another Granaway Stone. I mean, at this point, hey, I like the Shavka Evangel um, here. Probably a lot more than the Dust of Brawler. The five is a big difference. Um, Urge of Missive isn't too great. Yeah, I think I want the Shotgun Evangel. Cookmaster is okay. It's a very aggressive unit. If this just said enemy, it would be so stinking good compared to how it is now. I'll take the Cook Cookmaster. I probably will try not to run it if possible. I want the Black Guard sidearm so bad. I'm so glad to see that. Justice here, I think. Uh, we'll take the Tandem Mark because we're more in Primal. Uh, the Pupil's okay, but we'll take the Reconnaissance pretty happily. We'll take a Lundry Mist, it's okay. This is insane. We can run all five of them, too. Uh, that is just blowing my mind. That's just crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just look at Genetrix RL Wayward real quick. Two cost, three, four. Players can't discard cards. Surge, the next unit you play this turn gets plus one, plus one. This card's really outrageously good, but we're not in time or justice. Um, hmm. Ah, that Midnight Hunt I was one. A Stone Star Bow would be pretty nice, but I think I would rather have either Flame Heart Patroller or Midnight Hunt. I think we're doing okay on the two drop department. We're doing okay. Get rid of the primal. That's just kind of messing up our count here. We're doing pretty good on two drops, really. Uh, that's a pretty good two drop. I. What are we becoming more dominantly fire here? That does nothing sometimes. That's not good. Our controller can become a dead card though too. Hmm. Hard choice. Hard choice. Up 17 units. Let's take the midnight hunt. I don't know if it's better than our controller, but I guess we'll find out if it does pretty good or not. 
Grizzly contest is really interesting, but I don't think it's that great. Hmm. I like Purple Cutter. Man, there's a good bit of fire stuff here, too. Overeating mini bots, okay. I think that the Slagfear Observer is pretty good in fire. And I think this is better than looks, but there's other good cards to pick from, so no reason to have to take it. Uh, really, I think that Vorpal Cutter is very, very good. Uh, and I believe we're going to take it. Yes. Well, the Forcer isn't too bad. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but I mean, it comes down as a 4 or 5. Because, I, I mean, it gives itself its bonus. So that's pretty good. Um... choice here. I mean, we could run the primal symbol, I guess. If we wanted to splash a value leaf without justice. No. Uh, I like, I like, uh, Psych for your Berserker probably more than Roland's Enforcer. So we're gonna go with the Berserker. Let's try it out. I like the fire symbol, Grizzly Contest, another there chance to get that's pretty good. Oh my gosh, we're taking the Spirit Weaver. Out of all this, yeah. The Spirit Weaver's crazy. I love that card. They're probably way too high on it, but I love that card. Uh, Relentless Pursuit's not bad. Like, we didn't take Rally. And we already have a Mandrake that we're probably not going to run, but we might. I'll take the Relentless Pursuit just to have, you know, variety. We didn't take that Relentless Enforcer, but I think I want to take another Lurkin' Brute. Um, here I would probably want to take... Mm, I just like Brute Berserker. No, 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 no. We have a lot of units, but not a lot of token generation. I'll take the Grizzled Outcast just in case. Out of this, oh, that Dark Blade Cut Purse is coming in pretty late. I think it's pretty good. It, it's either that or Flame Art Patrol, and I think it's the Cut Purse. And then, oh, an easy Silver Blade Reaper. Oh, another Silver Blade Reaper. And, okay, we'll take it. And a Worldly Tutor. Hey, I think we got a pretty good setup here. Uh, I think we have a plethora of cards we want to run and Stone Scar. So let's just cut some stuff we probably don't want to be running. I might run this out, but I don't think so. I think we want to run the Burning Core Drake. I don't think we want three. We might want one. We do want the Skeletal Dragon. That's okay. Don't want that. We're going to try to avoid playing this if we can, especially having a Psych 40 Berserker. Yeah. Don't really want two of those. We have 18 units on here, but I don't think Assault Shield's good still. That's an amazing weapon here. We don't need two reconnaissances. Hmm. Okay, okay. This isn't too bad. This is pretty good. Uh, things should go like that. Okay. So, we don't need Found Val. So, in that case, um, hmm. Alright, so what are we going to cut? Oh, we really don't need to make cuts. We actually kind of add a couple things in. Uh, curve looks decent. We have a new wardrobe that we took out. Good to have added back in right now. Oh, uh, the Acute Master, we don't want to add that back in if we can help it. We would take back the shield. We would take back flash fire probably too. How much do we want to back this fire? Yeah, a little bit more. Uh, price sounds pretty good with the, uh, get the dark fire cut, cuppers. Yeah, dark blade cuppers. So, I mean, that's kind of synergy, but, and it synergizes with surge, but. Not super sure on that one. There's not too much flying. We have some anti-flying stuff just by having flying. Not very big on Mandrake Shambler. It's a super aggressive unit. Um, this is a hard 
choice, but we're almost there. We almost got this thing built. Let's go with these two. We just kind of skipped a four drop spot, I guess. Yes. Okay. I can dig this. Let's go ahead and cut these back real quick. Power back in. That looks like a winning deck right there. Very early curve and then like kind of a drop out and then a bunch of five drops. Okay. So we're low to the ground. We got a band wolf for our very, very top end, but we don't have a lot of like card filtering or draw. Not too much. Uh, we're going to redraw that. MHC74 is our opponent. Okay. That's a little bit better. Uh, this going to be pretty solid. We're going to start with a lurking group. Uh, if possible. We really need a shadow. We'll still play the Dark Blade Cumbers, of course. And we'll, we'll, act, we'll change to playing that. Okay, we're getting kind of mana screwed early here. Did some damage. Pretty nervous about this right here. Um, it's just a two-two now. Oh, I'm surprised. I think we have a trick. No blocks. They might be. They might think they're the aggressive. But they're aggressor. Hey, maybe they are. Okay, let's start the turn. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, okay. Now the question remains. What do we got here? Um. Yeah, honestly, we do want to do this because that lurking group doesn't really do anything uh, against a 4 4. They decide not to attack. And it just dies at 2 1. 4 1 will ping in damage every turn, threatening their life total. So this is actually perfect. We're gonna do this number, Spirit Weaver. It's gonna be a plunder. We're gonna get rid of ooh, redirect damage. Uh, oh, that's a hard choice actually. We're gonna get rid of one of the lurking birds. We don't really need it anymore. The A space. And we're gonna use this relentless pursuit to amazing effect this turn. Uh, let's go ahead here. We're gonna get an absurd amount of health. Also doing an absurd amount of damage. And then we gain one more fire influence, and they don't gain any health. Let's swing over the top. Oh, we'll take that. We'll take all that damage. Go to 15. Oh, got that. Mm. So it looks like we got him. Plus they have something. They have four. See what they do. I think I have them with the with the uh, flash fire. Which I was talking about flash freeze. That's probably a fast spell. Well, flash fire is not. So my logic there did not count. Oh, that hurt. That hurt a lot. So let's go. We misplayed, didn't we? How did we get this? Oh, we got returned to our hand. Okay, okay that's fine. So, oh, we should have played something else, honestly. Um, yeah, we should have played the Delta Dragon. That was a big misplay. We'll take all that damage. That was a big misplay. Yeah, that could have cost us the game right there. We should have played the damn Skeletal Dragon. Darn, Skeletal Dragon's fine. So bad. Such a bad move. Okay, 
right, so let's go ahead and yeah, let's try that. against Queen Mob, Queen Mab, that's a Arthurian reference right there, 73, um, hmm, we could probably keep this, this is just doesn't do anything in this game, we would like to plunder away some of that stuff though, let's redraw, I like this better, it's not very good though, we need to get more influence to play anything. Good. I think we need to add more uh, sigils. One more sigil. One more shadow sigil. isn't a fantastic start to our second match. When I was building this deck, I was pretty hyped though. I was pretty excited. Mm. Okay, there's an improvement. Kill it. We had to play it. I'm gonna take on a cell block with you too. But I think they'll kill it before I get to this camp. Makes sense. Putting on a hat. Putting on my thinking cap. Okay, so we're getting kind of power screwed here. We're gonna wait it out though, just in case things just rapidly turn around. Well, we got one more turn. One more turn. I mean, that's a thing. Play it. And then next turn. Oh man, I can't believe we got four. up against Scabby Heart. We'll keep this for sure. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's a start. That's a start. Even if they remove the Lurking Brute, we got that follow-up with that Skeleton Dragon. Perfect. Eventually, hopefully, we'll activate this Granite Waste Zone, get a free 1-1. One, one. The minute we get more Granite Waste Zones, so we can start activating them, Grizzled Quick Shot will be amazing.
Anyways, uh, let's go Shadow Sigil. Let's start. Start. I'm gonna play a zero one for three in this guy. Nope. real quick. Oh gosh, they turned it into a 2-2 zone. No way. Oh, it's odd. Different what I thought it was. Hmm. Units of the same attack and health. Huh. Oh, that's weird. Uh, okay. Do this. Let's swing out. I think they'll block both when this attacks. Oh, I got that wrong. I got that very wrong. things first. card can be pretty gnarly. And we can make all three threes. That's a really good rare in this deck they got there. I don't understand. So I'm going to go ahead and collect this. Ooh. We're betting on having a sigil. we got a 5 health. Let's go ahead and plop this down and flying life steal. Oh, it's just a, just a tiny bit short of 5 attack. Let's get that. Oh, I probably should have drawn first, but that's okay. Got a couple zero fives in the way.
so. Okay, we have a new surge. We'll hold it then, and play space. We only have one up. They have fine, so they kind of blow us out of here, but we lose on the two. Jumping there, trading there, that's perfectly fine, and you know, just blocking there. So all this was for one damage, but we got a trade out of. That's, um, I like that trade. And we put them at four life, which makes it lethal with their four one, unless they have a removal spell here. I could see defiance being a thing. What else is one cost? There. to his attack, I believe. I don't know how. Okay. Hmm. Let's go ahead and nice base. We're getting some life. You know, we eat a unit. <laughs> yep, so we traded there and you know. Let's enter. Now we have a higher chance of seeing deal three damage. Let's see. We got a zero five, but also, this is an interesting combination of influence. We got justice, uh, we got justice primal shadow, but what's the card that's like the person in their ritual robes, the cultist is sneaking in, trying to poison this thing, uh, it's purpose, age of purpose, and I think, I believe that's purpose factions. No, not Talir. Why am I always thinking there were Talir? That's the uh, Marizen. Looks like Marizen. Wait. Oh. oh what? Okay. Let's do that. We got 0 6. We got about 6 3 with one of them. Sacrifice a unit basically. What does this guy? Your cards revenge into the top five cards of your deck into the top ten. It looks very good. And then it's amazing stats with plunder on top of that. That's great. Okay, six two. I'm totally okay with them attacking either of our units because that means we'll have victory. They're using it as a health boost though, just because they have a small charge unit. health. Uh, they can block here, and they can block here, and then they'll have nothing. And nicely enough, we've also not taken any, you know, hits from that. No unit losses. We're at absurd health, too, which is a great feeling. The last few games have been demise, as they say. <laughs> but, now, hey, this is feeling pretty good. Okay. Oh.
UFC card. I don't know if it's good or not, though. It seems pretty darn good, though. You'd, I would play a two cause, one London, but one more. If it's flying, no, that's pretty good. Sack this just because it's got to happen, but I don't know. Let's start with our lurking bridge. Okay, so they are 3 1, and they could be even more if they manage to uh, trigger multiple times. Uh, no. Wait, I mean, hopefully it doesn't deal too much damage to us. I'm going to draw extra cards. Okay, so their sky crab probably should already know that was the initial air plugs. But yes, they are definitely a sky crab. Okay. Um hmm. so have that defense. But yeah, I had to check all out. Their cartographer or their cartographer can get as powerful as it wants. Stop them when the time comes. Okay, so there's a top control right there. Boom. Oh, we could get some very, very unblockable damage. And actually, it centers really well with our Lurking Brute. So let's go ahead and do that. Honestly, I kind of want to decimate it. Maybe I'm being too greedy. Swing out. And then... Let's go Evangel. Let's see. top in here, but we kind of sacrificed one of our sigils, and then now we're hoping for sigils. We can get rid of armed and dangerous by running the towering arachnid. Run that out. Uh, we will sacrifice... Huh. Sacrifice the look a bit smaller. And let's go ahead and transform. Hmm, armed and dangerous is kind of one top, but no, we're fine. So the question here is, do I swing and trade with their 5-3? Yes, I think I do. If I can get rid of the whole board, I got 5-2 on the board. Which is so fantastic. That's not good. Okay, okay. Um, I'll swing in. And we can drop, I would say, for a lot. A little bit more delicate, but man, it does a lot of damage. They have to block two pretty, they have to play two pretty defensive units to be able to stop an Inferno Z lot, I would say. Good game, well played. Real lucky there at the end. Oh my gosh. Good game. Alright, we're up against Finstinky. We are going to redraw. Those are kind of a 
synergistic units that just don't work together. And I really like this hand. Man, I almost forgot the Tattoo Dragon had a pledge. Ooh. Honestly, I think we just don't pledge it, though. Been pretty empowering, but this deck, if you get to three, it runs for this move. Um, yeah, we probably should have, though, huh? Let's go with the Raking Brute. And we talk like fire. Pro either way, next turn we need to play that Grand Waystone because we probably should have just now, honestly. We have other plays out. Getting the Lurking Brutes out early is nice. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Swing out. And then we'll go with another Lurking Brute. That start feels excellent. <clears throat> Okay. And then hmm. it's something like this. And then uh do we I kinda wanna play that Burning Gorge Drake to start getting those pigs in. Um because I, I can plop down the tattoo dragon riders so we're about to draw our cards from this and then get a two-two in addition. A two-two is nothing to look at. Like they are they're pretty crazy. Uh, okay. Well, that was sort of surprising. Okay. Um. And we will drop. Hmm. We'll drop a four three. We could always like, a chance, take the one of the two twos and, and do that. Uh, that imbued would be pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and swing out. They don't have any units to exalt on, so it's fantastic. Um, uh, we'll drop that into the unit survives, and we'll go to town, imbuing it. Swing in for 18 potential damage. Let's go ahead and swing out here. Guessing the 3 2 is going to get blocked. Okay. Yeah, let's view it. Ooh, we could just play the overwhelm unit, but I want to view this. Oh. Still. Even without overwhelm, I mean, a 9 2 is pretty solid, huh? I don't know. I mean, this was an 8 1, so there's not too much difference. Here. That kind of does make a difference, though, huh? Uh, that helps a lot. We're gonna use it to kill this. Hmm. Let's in turn, and they swing in. We're gonna go 12, we're gonna swing in with 18. It's a little bit of a pickle. Interesting. Uh, let's go with this. Let's go ahead and pierce through that. So they have to block now. The question is, how are they going to block? Them? Now this is free to attack, which is a pretty big difference. Perfect. Oh my goodness, man, if we had that second go. So we'll swing in. I think we've got our victory right here. Yep, to the face. Okay. Alright, we're up against Khalifa. Uh, we'll redraw that. That's definitely 
Gun Keeper. Some sack fodder. I think I want to put this gun target as soon as possible. Get that plunder action. Probably get rid of the dark fire, even though it just won us in that game we just had. Uh, because it's a 5 drop. Get a 5 2. Sigils. could do is just straight up just drop that in the, in the pit. Yeah, let's just do that. That's a smart way to do this. I'm crazy. Sacrifice to get a plunder. We're going to get rid of our Bane Wolf in turn. Then we'll plop down a 5-1. So the Dragon didn't even think about the synergy between those two cards. They are excellent together. Some solid removal here, though, which will be a problem. Honestly, I think we want to go with Silver Reaper, but we're going to play the three cost five one because if it gets there, it gets there. This still does something, and this makes that card amazing. We really need to get rid of something we don't need. I feel like it's better as a five one. Berserk. Pretty good ability though. Hmm, my opponent is thinking. It's odd not to see that fast speed. Oh, it's Ender Sharn. What am I talking about? Was fast. Oh, cool. Please don't play anything. Don't play a flying in it. Just guess my concern. What is happening? No. Can't attack your book unless you play two more cockroaches or spells. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay, we're gonna go fire. And then let's go ahead. I don't want to have plunder anything, right? No. Five life still in the air. What if that is devastating? At this point, a couple hits is lethal, pretty much. Uh, there's cast like levitate, and then we're up to spell and draw with levitate. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I don't care about that. I want my life steal. We're not gonna get it, probably because the one ones, but that's okay. An attack for 10. I'll take the damage, I guess. This is a hard decision. This is crazy. Good. Um, dang it. Oops. Uh, we'll do that next turn, I suppose. Okay. Um, <laughs> then turn. They're at 20 health, so. This thing is actually super hard to activate, it seems. Like, you want to save spells or have a large number of spells just to be able to activate it. Because that thing. Just kidding, not the laugh at. Sorry for the yawning. Uh, the 10 10 8 doesn't laugh at. The thing is dangerous. I'm not going to block. Play a 5-4. 
Uh, cause we lost each of your time for the interesting cards that it had cost me too. Interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go to this. Um. Let's kill this. So we're blocking this. Hey, we're at 29. No. Dark Fire has definitely reduced in value now. We want like an Inferno Z lot. It's uh, unfortunate. I wonder if that dark fire counts this, because if so, those two five cost cards have a lot of synergy. Um, okay. Let's just block here. We'll take six damage. Okay. Yes, that's a card we're looking for right there. Uh, we're gonna swing out. If they play two spells, it could be very bad for us. So it's gonna swing up five life steel. It kills you five damage, which kills their five four. Without missing out. Honestly, I feel like this would probably be an uh, take out. Uh, that 10 is a big problem. There's a chance that we can get out of this without losing. Still block. Oh. Yeah. Well played. So, if you like the draft, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're going to go ahead if we have any packs to open. But, uh, um, yes, it's up for a night. Let's go, we're going to open the prizes real quick. At least, oh, we do have packs. We're going to open the packs and talk about them. Yeah. Ooh, a Flame of Zolta and, oh, I don't recognize.
cancel the packs immediately. Like that. Well, this is a pack of information we'll find out. Let's open it first. I want to say defiance. It's not defiance. It is defiance. Okay, okay. Back for more. Okay, play a unit from your void that died this turn. So, Jack. Looks like, uh, what's his face? Desert Marshal. I don't know. Play a unit from your void that died this turn. It gets Aegis. It's like anti, it's super anti removal. I never do this. This card, it's uh, rare. It's really good. Uh, tw I love the art on this card. I remember this card. Oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful artwork. Very kind of creepy, but super cool looking. Four cost two one deadly. Now when dies create and draw a plus two attack of Viper Fang with deadly. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Odd card. Tunneling Gargantua. I just thought this card was pretty strange too. Like an 8 cost by 5. But it does have killer and pledge. And it gets an increase, like a little boost for having high relic high costing relics. Okay. Got lost in, in the artwork there. Um So, noteworthy cards. I mean, there's so many cool cards in, in uh, Defiance. Like Erect on Egg, actually run it sometimes in Constructed when it's re when it's available for Expedition. Oni Forge Master, I've ran a lot of them. Uh, I remember towards the early part of the Defiance format, way back when, uh, this used to be my, my favorite card. Uh, let's write Intimidator. And it's, per it's, I mean, it's not permanent, but it's a pretty good buff. It is extremely, this card reminds me a lot of the Grizzled Outcast. Cost one less, that line's better, doesn't have quick draw, but it does have pledge. It's in power instead of surge. Oni Samurai, I remember when this came out, I thought this was so cool, because it's like the counterpart to Oni Ronin, that's pretty sick. Um, I think it's really well built too, it's just a 1-2, so it's like that justice defensiveness, it's really odd, but cool. Um, Mighty Strikes is a great card. Yeah, I'm just kind of reminiscing about some of these cards. Let's go to some of these This is a lot more recent. Okay, so we've got Legendary. Holy crap, dude. A premium Legendary. we got Sodi the Metamorph. Uh, yeah, that could be any Legendary we wanted to if we didn't just want this beautiful piece of art right here. Look at that. That's nice and premium. Oh my gosh. Such a nice card. Uh, yeah. And the influence requirement is crazy, but with symbols out now and other kinds of fixing going on, drawing cards is going to be super easy. Other than that, noteworthy cards, we got an Evangel. Of course we love Evangels. A Wizard Crow, and I've missed this card severely. I love this card. It's so good. It's so cool. I mean, it's not good. It's okay. It can be pretty good, though. Usually it's pretty bad, but man, I kind of miss this card. It's a fun card. It's a fun card even just to pass and to play against. Uh, yeah, so a highlight of this is definitely so the metamorph in these packs, but man, that's awesome. Yeah, so that makes the draft totally worth it. Of course, the gameplay was fun too. Have a great night. Take it easy.